Now then guys, so I wanted to do a summary of what we've done so far with this V6 engine um, and what the plans are for the future. Uh, just for those who are interested, I'll go into a bit more detail uh, into what we've done so far to get it running on this standalone ECU, um, explain some of the bits and some of the difficulties, and then I hope that it'll be useful to someone in the future. So what we have is a Jaguar S-Type 3 litre V6, uh, they called it an AJ30, but it's the same block as the Mazda and the Ford V6. Supposedly, supposedly it's been developed by Porsche and then Ford bought it. Um, Jaguar did something with the cylinder heads uh, and the inlet manifold, so this is the most powerful version. This is standard 240, which I think the Ford had 225 or 220. So 240 horsepower at the flywheel, standard. Um, it's an aluminium block with steel liners, um, chain driven. Um, yeah, chain driven, so it's not a belt, it's a chain which should last forever, but obviously they don't last forever. Uh, life of the engine, supposedly. So, what have we got? Gav made the engine stand, uh, got a design offline, so he made that himself. We had to sacrifice a Jaguar 5 speed manual gearbox to make this work. Which in hindsight is maybe a bit of a mistake because they're quite rare, the 5 speed manual gearboxes. So we actually had to split the gearbox, which was a nightmare. Um, and then the gearbox, the bell housing, means that we can run the flywheel and the starter motor. And then the bell housing bolts to the frame. Uh, standard Jaguar uh, engine mounts, uh, just on these stands here. So if I run to the front of the engine, we'll work forwards, backwards. So just the basic control panel. Gav's got himself a wide band uh, air, flow meter, uh, air fuel ratio, which we've not put into the exhaust yet. And then just basic push button start. That's not fully working yet, but it does start the engine. These don't really do anything. We've saved the Jaguar radiator, which is quite a decent radiator. It's not about an inch thick. But as you can see, quite a decent size to it. And we've kept the fan. Standard Jaguar fan. Um, looking at the throttle body. So originally these engines came with a electronic throttle body with a motor. And the pedal was a, a pentometer, whatever it's called. So it was no cable basically. Which was never going to work with the aftermarket ECU. Not ours because it's just a cheap one, Mega Squirt. I think the more expensive ones do can control electronic throttle bodies, this one cannot. So, in order to run with this Toyota MR2 Turbo throttle body off of a 3S GTE, we've had to fabricate a very basic manifold adapter which goes from the Jaguar inlet manifold to the throttle body. It also comes up at an angle because otherwise. It would foul underneath here, so that's why it looks like it. That's why it's in that position. Um, we've got Mega Squirt running the idle control valve, and that's the throttle position sensor. The inlet manifold is a fancy one, supposedly, according to the Jaguar instruction manual. So it's got these uh, motor driven flaps inside, so it turns 90 degrees or 180 degrees. And then what that does is it changes the length of the intake runners, depending on RPM and load. Uh, so low RPMs are closed, high RPMs are opened. Does something fancy with the uh, making power. Um, looking at the fuel rail. So the S-Type comes with a non-return fuel rail, uh, which means there's no return pipe going to the fuel tank. Um, there is, on the end of here, there was a, a fancy fuel pressure sensor. Um, so what we've done is we've we've had one of Gav's colleagues has welded on a flange. So where the fuel pressure sensor was is now a return line going to a boost referenced regulator which goes back to the temporary fuel tank. So this is actually for a turbo engine, uh, boost reference so that if, you connect, if it is turbocharged it increases fuel pressure with boost so that it doesn't 
you've still got flow through the uh, fuel injectors. Uh, but that's just set to, I think we set it to 42.5 PSI, roughly, uh, because that's what Megasquit uses uh, as its fuel flow reference for its injectors. So if you've got a 220cc fuel injector, it's at 43 PSI, something like that. I found it on the, on the manual. So that's the fuel system. So we've turned it into a return style fuel system uh, using, um, in the hair is a... MR2 turbo fuel pump going to the uh, Jaguar uh, old filter which is probably clogged up fuel system uh, because we're running Mega Square MS3X with the additional board inside the casing we're running full sequential fueling and ignition uh, probably a bit overkill for our knowledge uh, but it basically means that it's the most efficient type of fuel control and you can do silly stuff like anti-lag and all that business with it. Uh, well, do a more aggressive anti-lag with full sequential than you can normally. So each injector, each coil is wired to the Mega Squirt and each injector is wired to the Mega Squirt. They're not in pairs um, like they would be if it was, uh, I forgot the word now, the other type of... Uh, fuel control. Um, we have in here, we have the VVT, verbal vibe timing, same on the other, other side, on the other bank, so I keep looking at the engine, not the phone. Um, now from my understanding, this is relatively basic VVT, uh, no, uh, variable valve timing, yeah, VVT. Um, it basically, it flips between two positions, it's not variable, so once it's on, it's at 10 degrees, if it's off, it's at 20 degrees, something like that, which makes it easier for us to program in the ECU. Whereas on some engines like the MX-5, or the, the newer MX-5, uh, the 2. Mac 2.5, that's got um, you can you can adjust the actual degrees of VVT, uh, which takes some more bit of knowledge to set up. So yeah, VVT on this, and then under here is the cam position sensor. So in order for the Mega Square, the ECU to run full sequential fuel and ignition, the engine, no, the ECU needs to know where the cams are in relation to where the crankshaft is. So you've got a cam position sensor there, and then if we run around the engine, uh, it's somewhere under here, have I lost it? Uh, it's either this side or the other side. No, it's this side, it's got a fancy, this fancy wire here. That goes to the crank position sensor, and that's um, that's standard from Jaguar. It's covered in foil to uh, stop interference, so it's a nice clean signal. So yeah, so um, full sequential. It needs cam position and crank position. Uh, the coolant system. We've kept all the original hoses uh, from the Jag. We've had to bodge the uh, climate control heater. Uh, pipes so they for some reason there's three pipes go to the heater cabin the, the cabin and the heater nope heater in the cabin uh, we just put a wire connector there just to blank them all off so now I think properly this this mechanism down here that actually it's got some solenoid valves that controls hot and cold water going into the into the cabin uh, we'll cut all this out and we'll block off the pipes when it goes in the car um, exhaust system, standard manifolds. Uh, we did have some exhaust that you saw in previous videos. They've been stolen because I left them outside. Some, someone bloody nicked them for scrap, bastards. So I'm going to have to fabricate fabricate a new exhaust with some silencers and also put the uh, wide band sensor in those. Here's the the second uh, intake length runner adjuster. That another valve in there opens and closes. Uh, what else we've got? The ECU, so it's a DIY kit from, uh, what's the website called? Uh, DIY Auto, something it's called, in America. So they sell kits, uh, and you build it and sold it yourself. About 600 quid all in, with all the bits I think it was. Um, so that was actually built, went together quite easily, and it worked first time, which was surprising. Sorry, not surprising that it worked. Surprising that the set, doing the settings, got the engine to start, was... Amazing, really. We thought that'd take weeks, months to do. 
Forgot to talk about the coils. So these are what's known as um, it says in the uh, Mega Square manual. They're a they're a dumb coil. Um, so there's no amplifier inside there, which means if you were to connect that straight to Mega Squirt, Mega Squirt would over, would overheat because it can't run the uh, the amps or the ohms. Something something in it. So this is a cheap Chinese amplifier off of a Volkswagen. Um, and that ups, I think it ups the voltage from Mega Squirt to the coil. So that goes in between the coil and Mega Squirt. So you need those. Watch out for that when you're building your own ECU. Um, if you've got fancy coils like off of an American V8 LS engine, those coils can plug straight into Mega Squirt. These ones cannot. What else have we got? Batteries down below. Uh, the wires are a mess, and that's just because we've just wanted to get the engine running. When the engine goes in a car, it'll be all nice and neat, uh, and you'll be able to um, work out the lengths and where stuff's going to go. And that's about my summary, so 12 minute video, uh, just a bit of detail of what it is. Um, the project is slowly progressing. Uh, we want to... Uh, Probably, I would do some more tinkering with ECU to get it run a bit better because at the moment it just idles. That's all it does, it idles, it doesn't really rev. Um, but then also it needs to go in the car. Now, other projects coming to the channel, as you can see, there's an RX8 in the garage. Um, this is one I've borrowed, it's not mine. But I'm going to do some tinkering on that and maybe do some videos. Uh, exhaust needs fixing, decat it. Um, New spark plugs, new coils, just some TLC. It's got a hot start issue, but it's intermittent, so sometimes it's firing, sometimes it isn't. So it's done about 50,000 miles on its first engine, so it might need engine rebuild soon, but we'll see about that. And then also another thing on the floor there, I've got a little, uh, <laughs> little bike for my son. I'm going to be modifying that into sort of a custom balance bike. So I'm going to try and get some inspiration off the internet and do a custom little mini bike and get it all painted up. So I might do a video on that. But uh, thanks for watching. 12 minutes if you've got through to the end. Uh, Till next time.